tourism to the agricultural uh, sector, it acts like an income supplement. Now, when the farmers start earning, naturally the places where they stay, the villages or the rural areas where they stay, they develop because of the increased income, it sets up a virtuous uh, cycle of spending, so which develops the local economy, which in turn encourages other farmers and their families, their children to take up agripreneurship or agritourism as a career. And when entrepreneurship takes place, it naturally leads to employment generation, especially in the local areas. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there was a survey which was taken in the city of Mumbai. And uh, you'll be surprised by the results that almost 60% of those people did not have any village or native place to go back to. The reason for that is because their ancestors had left their villages and native places to go to cities in search of better opportunities, better income in form of employment and over a period of time settled there. So what has happened is that the younger generation has lost their cultural moorings and those who started getting old could not go back to the village because of physical reasons, disabilities or old age or because their native places are located in extremely difficult terrains, which then has led to a extreme rural and urban divide, which I suspect is not only the case with India, but also with a couple of other countries. So it is hoped that by having establishing agritourism centers in these areas, it will encourage tourism in the form of people from cities village uh, visiting these uh, places, which in turn will encourage the government to build better infrastructure for better geographical connectivity. And by visiting these places, the cosmopolitan culture, the kids, especially the millennials, they will be exposed to the real India. And the real India, as Mahatma Gandhi said, resides in her villages. So what do I mean? This is a picture of a rice plantation event taken uh, last month. Observe the visitor profile. Basically, our guests are young children and young families. This is the perfect age to expose them to agriculture, to their culture, to nature. There you have the kids interacting with the cow, this is the gear cow. And uh, this is, you know, the funny thing is millennials think that the milk comes from supermarkets or the milkman. So this is just to give them an idea that no, it's not the case. And then you have the tractor ride. So when you visit, say, Parijat Agritourism Center, what kind of employees will you meet? Everyone say hello to Nirmala Maushi. Now, Maushi in my mother tongue, Marathi, means maternal aunt. Now, observe her carefully. She has a red bindi on her forehead. She is wearing a black beaded necklace. She is wearing bangles, green bangles on both the hands. All these are signs of a married woman. What she's holding is something which I'll cover in the subsequent slide, but keep it in mind. People like her follow the old value system where they put the family first and extremely traditional as in the traditional role for her is Sul and Mool, which is in Marathi, which translates into cooking and children, taking care of those. Obviously, the family is extremely tightly knit. Most of the times they are joint families. However, the urbanization increasingly has taken a toll where the system is under a lot of pressure. She has an extremely conservative attitude, as in she will not eat before her husband and children eat. She will fast for her husband's uh, long life. 
and also they are extremely image conscious what will people say is the constant refrain so you look at her she is wearing something known as her attire is known as lugda which is a traditional sari worn by women in those parts now most of these ladies are illiterate obviously they are uh, technologically challenged so smartphones they are not comfortable with that an interesting fact is that they in villages in india they don't look at farming as a profession to be done scientifically they look at it at look at it as a, a means of putting their food on the table more of sustenance and woefully the dullest person in the family is engaged in this occupation so as a result family uh, biases have resulted in this sector agricultural sector not growing in the manner other professions have they are into more physical labor leading to a longer and healthier life and they are also a treasure trove of local and indigenous knowledge which means the plant that uh, nirmala maushi was holding is a local veggie which is a uh, grow it, it grows in the wild during monsoons so one of the things we have is foraging or scavenging for the wild monsoon veggies which becomes an event but they are the ones who know how to spot and prepare them so naturally with this backdrop what are the challenges that i have faced the first and foremost is they have an extremely limited exposure to the outside world they don't travel much outside and their family is their whole world so with the old value system with a conservative attitude gender parity is uh, still a rarity where the male and female roles are extremely rigidly traditionally defined where it both in the personal and professional sphere and then we have a mainstream bollywood movies which do not show the certain communities in a flattering light let's say the lgbtqia community but you know the what happens is it reinforces certain, certain biases thankfully things are changing with the film industry not only bollywood but other indian films evolving of course because of the conservative attitude a lot of things are social taboo let's take example of clothing you come like say minis midis you wear skirts so it makes them uncomfortable or even public displays of affection like holding hands or cuddling or hugging they are not comfortable with that which is still a taboo topic for them and of course most of my employees come from the neighboring villages what happens in the farm becomes talking points for them and it also goes to the neighboring village from where we are located the village is known as shilottar so my image my business image largely depends on this for example if you have foreigners doing sunbathing let's say in a bikini just an example it will create a social scandal and then my business image might take a beating because of that this is just one example i'm giving you and lastly is with all this in mind how to broach this topic where they are largely uncomfortable and fixed in their ideas these are the challenges but then with the recommendations that i propose from the next slide let's see what best we can do ladies and gentlemen folks it is always the man on the top which decides the culture so it always starts from the top if i want to introduce the lgbtqia community to my farm stays i should be first aware about what this community faces in terms of challenges sensitivities stigmas etc whatever so unless i know that i will not be able to communicate further or enable some transition i also need to build a rapport with my staff because only when they open up and speak with me i will understand what's in their mind generally people are wary about talking to rrp but if you are you establish a certain rapport understanding what where they are coming from and conversationally speaking with them from time to time will make a difference what also will make a difference is that 
if they understand that our history, culture, mythology has examples of, say, these communities, like, say, LGBTQIA or the third gender or whatever, they will understand it is not a concept which is alien to us. So it sort of normalizes. So drawing to a rich cultural heritage, mythology, history is a, a force multiplier. And of course, there is a saying which goes, if you are 10 steps ahead of society, you're a leader. But if you're 100 steps ahead of society, you're forgotten. Folks, any change, even if it is from worse to better, involves inconvenience. So the important thing is, how do you gently and slowly introduce that change? One baby step at a time. Let's take the example of breaking gender stereotypes. What we have started doing is you remember the tractor I showed you. Traditionally, the tractor is driven by a male. We are training our Maushis, at least one or two of them to drive the tractor. This sort of breaks the hegemony of males in driving it and gives them a new sense of confidence. There is another thing also which we are doing, which is covered in the next slide. You see me felicitating a lady with a white cap. It is known as a topi. The significance, social significance of topi is it is worn by the males of the house. It's a traditionally male attire. Now, one of the reasons why we make even females or we felicitate females with it in public is so that it reinforces our concept of male female parity and without raising any hackles and it is done publicly in front of the staff. So subconsciously the message also goes to them. So this is what I mean by doing it baby step wise. Most importantly, the media of communication is important. What do I mean when I say that? Let's say we are talking about uh, female uh, hygiene issues, like say the menstrual cycle. I cannot speak on that with my female employees. They will be downright uncomfortable. But instead, if my wife speaks to them, they are more likely to be open to discussing these uh, issues. Which again brings me to the topic of involving professional agencies wherever and whenever required. Because even if I say owner has to be aware, I may not be the best man for the job or the best woman for the job. The point is that if you have people who are professionals who are aware of these topics, they will be a better fit to introduce it in the right way, where the resistance can be slowly overcome. In fact, I'm doing it right now in collaboration with the Mumbai based agency and the preliminary work is on the way. Everything else is theory unless it, put, it is put to the practical test. Ladies and gentlemen, the real test is when the rubber hits the asphalt. So how do we do that? Now at Parijat Agri Tourism Center and Aditya Agro Farms, we have day events also and we have overnight stays also. So first, let's say I invite lady bikers to come for day events. So initially the novelty value is there and slowly once the staff see them, and over events understand if it is nothing very uh, scary or awkward. Then after doing this, I can have these uh, communities come and stay over so slowly, slowly, unless you introduce them, unless you make it a practical habit, it is all going to be largely on paper. And finally, we need to sensitize guests about the cultural sensibilities of the locals. There is a saying in my uh, native tongue, which translates into, you can, if you want to clap, you need both hands. If you want to slap, you can do with only one. So it's a two way street. While I am sensitizing my staff, the visitors, my guests should also be culturally sensitive. They should understand what is acceptable and what is not acceptable so that the experience is more pleasant and it adds value to their visits. Ladies and gentlemen, these are 
some of my own observations experiments and uh, i would also request members of the august assembly to forward certain suggestions because we have a long way to go for mainstreaming these communities into tourism at least from where i operate having said that would anybody have any questions thank you so much for being such a lovely audience and while going i would like to send you with a food for thought which i believe is relevant in today's time life was much simpler when apple and black blackberry were just fruits i think we all will agree dhanyawad folks thank you hello everyone uh, thank you for being such a uh, wonderful audience uh, can we have you on camera please uh, the ones who are on uh, virtual medium it will be helpful anybody has any questions on the presentation i made or any suggestions i would really appreciate any suggestions made on the topic that i presented on and just a bit of a trivia uh the reason why you would see my powerpoint presentation uh, slide having colorful fonts is because uh, my country is celebrating her 75th year of independence it's a platinum jubilee so it is just sort of a celebration of that and we believe that vasudeva uh, kutumbakam that is world is one family so my good wishes to all of you on that so anybody has any questions for the same hello okay yeah i was wondering if you could just talk about one of the greatest successes that you've had in bridging the cultural differences between your guests and your staff well the greatest i would say is in the form of breaking the professional barriers because as i had covered in my earlier presentation what happens is the work roles are very clearly defined and uh, because they are traditional and have been passed down from daughter to daughter or maybe from family to family people are reluctant to change so as i explained to you in my earlier uh, slides we have trained one uh, lady staff in driving a tractor which is a big deal culturally here and besides that we have also been able to make them do work which is traditionally associated with the uh, uh, males like for example uh, digging you will be surprised because uh, once you come here the cultural context is very very different from other places and that's what it is right promoting your own uh, culture taking in mind the challenges which each one uniquely poses so i would say that breaking this professional mental barrier and social barrier would be my greatest success I hope I have answered your question. Yes, thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to ask or any, give a suggestion? 
Um, I have a quick question. Um, you spoke a little bit about the right pace and not um, trying to make too much change too quickly. And I was wondering mm. what sort of um, feedback mechanisms do you have to give you feedback about what that right pace is? Well, basically there is, since I'm already there with my family, I stay on the premises, I interact regularly with the guests. So the feedback mechanism comes two ways. One is when I'm interacting with my guests and if I ask them about their experiences. So sometimes I get a feedback from that side. And the other one is through the farm hierarchy, as in uh, about the labor, there is a supervisor for the farm labor. About the farm supervisor, the manager. Now, generally, the supervisors are from the same village. So when they are working along with the uh, laborers, that time they generally talk. And it is through this medium that I come to know a lot of feedback about what, what they're comfortable with or what they are comfortable, not comfortable with. So based on this feedback, this is where I decide what pace to set. And then of course, because I belong to the place, I am aware of the cultural sensibility. So it's more of a, uh, what do you say? It's experimentation, as I said. There is no official mechanism and I have to be very, very careful because these societies are very closely knit. So it's always better to err on the side of cautions, go slower than maybe faster. Thank you. Anybody else? The really interesting questions. Anybody has any suggestions? Because this kind of a topic is quite new where I am operating. So any best practices or any other suggestion that you may have? I do just wanna say that I found it very enlightening, very interesting, and I applaud you for making these changes, um, you know, however incrementally. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm just feeling a little bad that the initial part of the presentation was not able to be screened because that would have given you a better context.